Ross, well, Australian investigators have been given access to the wreckage of MH17 overnight, spending five hours at the crash site, all the time shadowed by armed pro-Russian rebels. It is an important step in the investigation and in finally bringing all of the victims home. Joining us now is Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull and Shadow Foreign Minister Tanya Plebisek. Tanya, I'll start with you. Tony Abbott and Julie Bishop's response to this tragedy has been very widely praised. Do you think we're doing enough? Uh, certainly, and the opposition has uh, offered from the very beginning full support to the government in its efforts. There is, uh, I think, every Australian, no question that we would... Uh, all of us um, be determined to see all of these bodies returned home as quickly as possible. The concern, of course, has been even though Russia has agreed to the UN Security Council resolution uh, that they wouldn't use their influence with pro-Russian separatists in the area to allow access to the site. Access is slowly being allowed, but as you said, in very small teams, we've actually got uh, around 50 police pre-positioned in London. Uh, we'd like to see them having access to the site as well. And frankly, in larger groups, it's very hard for a team of three or four people to cover sufficient area. You're talking about a crash investigation site of around 50 square kilometres. So it is important um, to get m more Australian investigators in there as quickly as possible. Malcolm, there's growing consensus that MH17 was shot down by a separatist using a Russian missile. If that is proven, should Vladimir Putin be allowed into the G20 summit in Brisbane in November? Well, I, I don't want to speculate about that. I mean, the G20 is uh, an important economic gathering. Uh, it's, uh, it's not Australia. Australia is not... Australia is the host, but it's not uh, uh, based on our invitation, if you like. So there would have to be a degree of consensus between the G20 countries, or the majority of them, on that score. Do you think I that's really possible? think, it, look, it, anything's possible, but I think it is too. I think it's too early to and not very helpful to speculate about that. I mean, what we're focused on, and what Tony Abbott and and our team, Julie Bishop, uh, who is in the Ukraine at the moment, what they're focused on is getting access to the site. Uh, recovering uh, the the bodies of all of those who perished in that uh, in that uh, crash, uh, and then of course being able to do the work to establish the cause of it. Uh, but you know, I think the, the the critical thing is to focus on that and not not jump too far ahead. It would be unprecedented if it happened, though, wouldn't it? Uh, as far as I'm aware, yeah. yes, it would be unprecedented. Okay. All right, let's move on to domestic politics now. There's been intense interest in the launch of Joe Hockey's book uh, yesterday. Now, Joe Hockey, we need to clarify something here, Malcolm, because Joe Hockey says in the book that two days after you told Laurie Oakes that you were going to run for leadership, you promised Joe Hockey privately that you wouldn't. Both of you then, of course, went on to lose to Tony Abbott. Did you go back on your word? Well, I was actually sitting in this chair when I said that Indeed. to Laurie Oakes on national television. Indeed. And I think most people who know me uh, know that it's, uh, I'm not the sort of person that says one thing on national television and then does something different. So, so you're saying that you didn't tell Joe Hockey no, privately I, no, that you wouldn't... No, I did not. No, everybody... So, I, I, uh, look, this is, this is really ancient history, you know. No, but it's I, not no, actually, no, I, because Melissa right. Babbage, Joe Hockey's wife, says that Joe okay. Hockey will never trust you again. And that's, that's difficult. You're meant to be a coalition. Well, You're both senior ministers well, I in trust, the coalition. I trust Joe and Joe trusts me. That's the important thing. But just as far as the history is concerned, it was a very fraught period. And it doesn't surprise me that people have different recollections of what was said. But the one thing that everybody knows is that both on Laurie's show, on, in, right here and literally sitting in this chair, uh, in this spot, I made it very clear that I would be a candidate in that ballot, and I made it clear on a number of other occasions in the media too. So what is the likelihood that I would be saying one thing publicly and then giving private assurances to the contrary? And the fact is I didn't. Now, but look, you know, it's a, it, it, it was a fraught and difficult period, and I can understand uh, people having different recollections. All right. Well, do you agree with Tony Abbott's Chief of Staff, Peter Credlin's view that Joe Hockey is the next natural Liberal leader? I wouldn't ever... Sp I've seen too much, uh, too many thrills and spills in Canberra to speculate on anything like that. Were you happy when you heard that? Does, does that fill you with joy that Joe Hockey might be the next chosen Well, look, jo Joe is a terrific guy. He's doing a fantastic job as Treasurer and he's very much admired. 
within the party and across the nation. But uh, there is no, no point in speculating uh, about politics. I'll leave that to you guys. You, right. do, you do it so well. <laughs> All right. Just finally, it's, a, it's been a very fun week in politics this week. Um, we saw Jackie Lambie um, basically opening up about her views on men and what's attractive. Is it nice to see Polly's, who are normally so stitched up, Tanya, just letting loose and, you know, doing a bit of pub talk? Oh, not really. I, I didn't think she did herself any favours. I, I think if we have uh, a standard in public life where if a man said, you know, a, a similar thing about what he likes in a woman, he would be pretty roundly condemned. I don't think you can, you can expect that uh, standard from men and then say it's OK if you're a woman. Malcolm, what do you think of Jackie Lambie so far in her performance in the Senate? Well, look, I, I just want to comment on another woman, and that's our colleague Julie Bishop. What an outstanding role model she is for all young women, all women. What an amazing job she has done in New York. I mean, Julie has made all of us so proud by the way she has performed, getting that resolution through the Security Council. I mean, Tanya, I know she's on the other, she's your opposite number, no, but wouldn't you agree she's yeah. been out an outstanding foreign minister? And, and Malcolm, I, um, I, I w was so, um, you know, we were so shocked, all of us, to hear this news. But from the moment I rang her, she's been very good at uh, making sure that we're um, briefed on what the government's mm. proposing and so on. I think it's a, uh, at a time like this, she's shown strong leadership. It's um, been very important for our nation to be able to come together. I don't think anybody would disagree with either of you. Malcolm, Tanya, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for that. Thanks very much. Over to you, Carl.